Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Scotia iTrades webinars. Today's topic is on risk management trading with stops and the 1% rule with the market guys. Let's do a quick audio test before we get started. If you can hear me clearly and the sound quality is great on your end, please click on that hand icon in your control panel. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, Kenny. And if you are experiencing audio difficulties, you can click on that sound check link in your audio panel. Sometimes that link may show up as a settings link. Also, the setup window may show up on your secondary screen if you are using two monitors. As always, everyone is muted for sound quality purposes. And if you did join using your computer speakers and find that the audio quality is not great, you are always welcome to dial using your telephone. Don't forget to enter the access code as well as the audio PIN number. And just as a reminder that Scotia iTrade does not provide investment or tax advice or recommendations, and nothing in this presentation is or should be construed as investment or tax advice or recommendation to buy, sell, or hold any security or to follow any particular investment strategy. Today's presentation, as with all of our presentation, is strictly for educational purposes only. And we did get a chance to use this control panel right here. I do want to note that the GoToWebinar platform does automatically hide the control panel on you from time to time. And if you do want to make it visible again, just click on that arrow icon. Also, you are welcome to view in full screen mode. And as always, you can click on the hand icon if you have any questions and type in your question in the question panel. And our presenter will address them either as they come in or at the end of the session. And we are also recording today's session. And if you did select yes on the registration page, we will email you the recording. Alternatively, you can access our past webinar recordings on our webinars on demand page or also email us at education at scotiaitrade.com to request a copy of the recording link. And you are also welcome to take notes. However, I will make today's presentation available for you to download at the end of the session. I do want to note that the handouts panel is not currently visible but will be so at the end of the session. And your presenter today is AJ Monty. He's a chartered market technician with over 30 years of experience in the financial industry. He currently serves as chief market strategist for the market guys, teaching professionals and novices alike innovative techniques to accumulate and protect wealth. He's also one of the more recognized financial experts in the industry thanks to his appearances on ABC, Fox Business, and PBS television, as well as a regular guest slot on Sirius Money Radio. AJ has authored two financial education books and is known internationally for his financial educational seminars. Welcome, AJ. Well, thank you very much, Rose, and welcome everyone to today's session. I see some, I see some regular attendees right here, and I, I want to again thank you for your attendance. Uh, before I show my screen, I just want everyone to to know and I mentioned this to Rose before we got started, that this PowerPoint presentation is the most important lesson that I can teach, actually, because if you, uh, if you think about it and look back at your own experience over time, uh, it's not how much money you make that counts when you're right. It's, in other words, you could be right 90% of the time, and believe it or not, still not make money. It, it really uh, depends on how little you lose when things go wrong. And this, this presentation is designed to help you minimize the risk over time. And when you know, before getting into a trade, when you know that there's a limit to how much you could lose on that particular trade, versus not knowing how much you could lose. I'm telling you, your emotions change and your confidence is dramatically increased because you know that there's only so much you're going to lose. And if it does go against you, if the trade goes against you, or if that investment doesn't work out, you can still be around for another day to invest or trade. Uh, now, I'm not. this is not an option presentation, but I have this slide up here because I will be mentioning options on just a couple of parts here. And uh, if you are an option trader, congratulations. If you're not yet an option trader, I would recommend you go online and download this document, Characteristics and Risks of Standardized Options. It's a free document that you can keep in your informational or educational library, and you can go back to it from time to time. It really is a good reference. Okay. Here are some bullet points. Uh, for those of you who have 
attended a market guy presentation or a Scotia presentation where I've, I've been presenting, you'll know I, I don't sit here and read you the words verbatim on each slide. You could absolutely do that for yourself. My role is to elaborate, to expand your horizons a bit and get you to think outside of the box and then this presentation is more or less your uh, going to be your notes. Uh, Rose will be able to send this to you, this document to you. It's my gift to all of you uh, and I encourage you to to print it out. Once you get it in a PDF document, print it out add your own notes, circle or underline some of the words for emphasis and put them in a three ring binder. Come up with your own method for archiving this information and so that you can go back and reference it from time to time when you need it. You see, I mentioned this uh, one, one word, confidence, just a short while ago. Confidence is the result of your removing fear from the decision-making process. And I'm not just talking about trading or investing. I'm talking about confidence in general. You'll notice that people who have a high level of confidence are also those who have very little fear or uncertainty about what they're doing. They march forward. And I invite you to do just that, to work on your confidence as an investor or trader for your own benefit and in order to build your confidence, you have to learn how to control your emotions so that your emotions are not controlling you. And risk management does just that. It moves you from an emotional state to a place where I'm disciplined. Okay, I can, I can move forward. I'm going to stick to this discipline and I'm going to be doing just fine. Now also, risk management allows you to be wrong more times than you might expect. You might say, well, I don't want to be wrong. Well, sure, who does? Who wants to be wrong? No one. But we have to be realistic. When, when we're looking at the markets, there are going to be uncertainties that are thrown at us, and we have to know how to handle that uncertainty and be wrong once in a while. Because if we are wrong, but we know that we're losing very, very little when we're wrong, we know that there is little fear as long as we can move forward. I mean, listen, a couple of weeks ago, Donald Trump, you probably heard about this guy, right? Now president-elect Donald Trump. Holy mackerel, the guy shocked the world. In, and he shocked the world in such a way that, and I don't know if you were watching the futures markets after the U.S. election, but the Dow futures were down 900 points when... Fox News declared the winner. Actually, I think it was Associated Press declared Donald Trump the winner. And immediately, the Dow futures dropped 900 points. The very next day, the market was up. It was positive. Now, talk about uncertainty. How, how could any investor forecast what's happened? Now, I, I actually did uh, project... Donald Trump the winner long before the election and it wasn't because I had some uncanny ability to analyze the political scene. The charts and what we're going to show you towards the end of this presentation, the charts were telling me that Donald Trump was going to win because of the way money was moving. The money was certain that he was going to win so the money started moving in a certain way and we saw that on the footprint. So again, prepare to be wrong manage the risk accordingly and make sure that you're minimizing the loss. Now bullet point number three you could see obviously I've already referenced this but learning how to manage risk is going to require your ability to learn or understand the, the charts, the technical charts that we're looking at. And I spend a lot of time teaching people this. In fact Robert you're I, I see Robert on the on the uh, attendees there. I, I think Robert Robert, has there ever been a time where you've missed one of these? I see you on every webinar, and you probably listen to every uh, recording as well. I see Robert Kelly on these presentations all the time, and I'm telling you, this is how you have to do it. If you want to understand technical analysis, he said a few times, uh, uh, then you got you have to plug in. Do do what Robert's doing. Plug into these free lessons. 
gobble it up, absorb it, become it, and what what will happen again, it will lift your confidence because you'll have a clear understanding as to what the signals are, are telling you. Now risk management also starts with stock selection and we're going to actually use the charts to find the right stocks and I'll give you the the picture perfect examples of what you need to look for in, in a stock and how to actually trade it and manage risk and finally listen you can't get into a stock and say okay I'm gonna stick to a risk management discipline and then when it's time for you to pull the trigger to get out you can't go back and say you know what uh, I think I'm gonna hold on to this one because the story has changed the story got better they came out with this new product this analyst is forecasting higher whatever it may be believe me when you are in putting in, in uh, a risk management plan in place and when it comes time to get out you need to get out you cannot renegotiate that position because something new popped up the world is always going to throw things at us information that's going to tempt us to change our minds and with regard to risk management you just you just can't do it now folks um, we have a Q&A box down there we have a good crowd I think it, I'll call it a quaint crowd. There isn't a question I'm not going to be able to answer for you. So if you have a question, particularly if it pertains to the slide that I'm looking at or we're looking at, then put it in your Q&A box and I'll get to it. And oh, by the way, uh, we will have time to look at your individual stocks and I will give the platform back to Rose and she will uh, pull up the stock symbols when it comes time and I'll actually show you how to incorporate the risk management plan into your actual stocks that you're looking at and that's that's a fun part I call that the rapid-fire stock analysis segment of the of the program here okay controlling emotion um, let me just first say this having a plan is going to help you stay accountable to yourself but the plan is extremely important especially when you are influenced by your own emotions let me give let me give you an example on this if you were to ask any financial consultant or financial advisor who's been in business for any length of time they will tell you and I would say 99 percent of the financial advisors will tell you that if you were ever to have a tragedy strike in, in your life you need to wait a good period of time in some cases up to a year before you make any financial decisions and that happens all the time you might have a, a husband and wife all of a sudden husband winds up having a heart attack and, and winds up passing on the wife all of a sudden is making decisions to sell the house, sell the furniture, get everything. That's not a good idea because those decisions are based on the uh, a heavy, heavy emotional burden. And what happens is if you don't have a plan set in place before a, an unexpected surprise comes about, or even tragedy, it's going to be very, very hard for you to think clearly. So when I tell people, put a plan together and stick to that plan it's kinda like you got your marching orders but you also have a map this plan acts as your map so that you can take the market and absorb it and, and interact with it step by step in fact how many of you by show of hands how many of you have read my book the five points for trading success just click on on your hands there a couple a few people okay uh, by the way uh, chapter one it starts off with with having a plan and if uh, if you decide you want to buy that book I, this is gonna sound crazy I would say go to Amazon believe it or not Amazon buys my own the books that I've written Amazon actually buys those books cheaper from my publisher than I get to buy them so if you're gonna get the book go on Amazon and I'm just telling you it's the cheapest way to get it uh, but that book was written to be a textbook if any of you have the book I would say go back and pull out 
the risk management, the one percent rule for managing risk. Get a highlighter and and highlight the heck out of, out of that book. I love it when people come to a seminar that I'm where I'm speaking, and they bring a copy of my book, and the pages are folded and written on and highlighted. I love that because it tells me they're using it. They're not just reading it for recreational purposes. They're re they're digging in. And that's what the book was designed to do, to be your textbook, to be your guide, to help you through the five points of trading successfully. And that's why I start off with the plan. It helps hold you accountable. Now, selling is predetermined. And, and what I mean by that is, and as you'll see, we have a mathematical formula that we use uh, to uh, to calculate all of this, it's very simple math. But I know exactly where I'm going to get out before I even pull the trigger to get in, and that again helps me build a foundation that's around this that that that's surrounded by this risk management plan that helps me be very very calculated without having to bring even a single emotion into it. Let me give you an example. Again, I'm like, let me lower the hands here. How many people by a show of hands have heard of black box trading? In other words, where the computer does all the trading. One, two, three, three people. Okay, let me explain to the rest of you. Black, black box trading is basically a computer algorithm that is designed to buy and sell stocks automatically for the owner of the program and most black box trading actually it costs millions of dollars to build these algorithms but most of them and I say well over ninety percent of them make money consistently they're like they're like cash machines they just get in the market they buy on the signals that are programmed they sell on the signals to get out and that's it um, for those of you who uh, have watched my television show on PBS. I had a guest uh, on on there, uh, Jim Rohrbach, who was the number one stock picker in the world, number one for many years. He's well retired now. But all Jim would do, he would wait for the stock to move over the 20 period moving average and he'd buy it. That's it. That's all he did. As soon as the stock closed over the 20 period moving average, he would buy it. As soon as the stock moved down below the 20 period moving average, he would sell it. And he was the number one stock picker in the world for many years. Well, guess what? You could build a computer program that says to the computer, buy this stock when it is greater than the 20 period moving average. Boom, done. Sell this stock when it's down below the 20 period moving average. Done. There's the exit strategy. And the computer could care less about emotion. It has no emotion. It's following instructions, it's following the plan. And that's what we, as humans, that's where we go wrong. Actually, that's where we go wrong. We throw in the emotional component, and that's why we lose money. Right here, bullet point number four, losses are kept within your risk tolerance. I know some of you have a lot of money in your account. I know that. It never fails. There's always someone that has a lot of money in their account on these events. But... Just because you have a lot of money in your account doesn't mean you should trade big. Or, in, in another instance, it doesn't mean that you have the ability to ride losses to an incredible percentage of loss. You shouldn't have to do that because you have a lot of money. If you have a lot of money in your account, or even a little bit of money, your role is to be the lifeguard of that, that, that balance, that bank account balance you are protecting that money and when you can keep your losses small then that means you're you're operating within your risk tolerance you know I don't want to beat beat up uh, the, the horse here you know last bullet point there talking about your emotions uh, you you are going to be faced with an emotional challenge whether I'm telling you how to do it on this webinar or not you, you're going to be challenged and, and here's how I know that because I've made all the worst mistakes you could possibly make over 34 year time my biggest losses get this and, and I remember my, my biggest single loss was in 1987 
How many of you are old enough to remember what happened in 1987? It was the crash. And I happened to be long silver. And silver was trading at around $11.5 an ounce. And at the time, that was a high. And I see things moving. I'm going, holy mackerel, this is my time. I'm going to go long silver because the whole world's going to go long silver. The world looks like it's crashing down. And I bought silver at 11 and a half. And I didn't check the charts. I didn't care what the opinions were of the analysts. I just went in there and I bought. And within four, actually it was four and a half weeks, I lost a million dollars of my own money because I didn't have a plan to get out, nor did I have a plan to minimize the loss. I said, I'm going to let this one go. I'm going to let it ride. And my emotions took over, and I got stubborn, and I started to fight the market, and I lost a million dollars. That was my greatest loss. It took me seven years to make that back. And believe me, after those emotions took over my mind, I was very timid. I... I could not just jump right back into the market. I still had money in my account, but I was tiptoeing back in. I, I was very, very uh, unsure of my own ability, and my confidence got rocked. And it took me seven years to make back the million that I lost in four and a half, uh, four and a half weeks. That was incredible. So, listen, you could tell me about your losses. I know exactly what that feels like. I've lived it, I've been there, done that kind of thing, and I want to show you from my mistakes. Now, the other thing is, keeping the losses small allows you to take many more losses. And let me, let me give you an example. Let's say, uh, I'm, I'm rounding this up, and I know not everyone has 100000 in their account, but I'm using a $100,000 trading account as an example. I could trade one stock, buy $100,000 worth of that stock because I can in that account and that stock could drop 25% in price and I've now lost $25,000. Now that for a lot of people you might think well that's a tough break but you can make back the $25,000 and, and you'll be okay but think about this if if I if I even take a bigger loss, if I have a hundred thousand dollar account, let's see who can answer this question in the Q and A box. If I have a hundred thousand dollar account and I take a fifty percent loss, I now have fifty thousand left in my account. Right now, if I'm looking at this as a new account, I have fifty thousand. How much of a percentage move do I have to make in order to get back the fifty? thousand dollars Charles was the first one I have to make a hundred percent back on my money to get back to break even you see that's tough and it may you may you may not do that believe me you get stocks like like Priceline PCLN uh, Google Amazon Netflix those are stocks that actually can drop fifty percent and if you have a hundred thousand dollars in in that one stock yeah, that's going to be a tough one to overcome. But now, if I take a smaller amount in my money, and I'm now only willing to lose, let's say, $1,000, well, if I lose $1,000, I only have to make back a small percentage to get back to break even. So I'm, I'm putting the odds. I'm using the calculation and the simple math to make it easier for me to make back the losses when I keep them small. Remember, big winners and big losers generally indicate extreme risk acceptance, but I, I'd rather you not have a high tolerance for risk. I'd rather you look at it and say, I'm going to stay disciplined and I'm going to refuse to let the market take my money. I, I'm absolutely going to do that. You see, um, I, there's a saying that I've, I've said many times over the years. You can only lose what the market, what you allow the market to take from you. And if you don't have a plan, you're allowing the market to take whatever it wants from you. And I, I'm referring to the market almost as it's, if it's a person, right? But that's the way it is. We almost have to look at the market as though it's a living being because it, it's contributors, all investors, fund managers, hedge fund managers, and private, private money managers, they are 
humans who are making decisions. So they comprise the market. So collectively, I actually can I can refer to the market as though it's a person. It's a large group of, of people, actually. Okay? Now, this is what the whole formula is going to be about. Please note this. Uh, if you want to scribble it down, basic steps of risk management. These are the points that I'm going to be following and the, uh, the math formula that I will be matching uh, to this slide is, is something that you could hand write back into the PDF document. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to analyze the market and identify the market and, and the segment trends. You see, what I said about unpredictability, even though the markets have been going up, by, by the way, the, the, uh, the Russell 2000, uh, let me just see real quick, is it up right now? I just got to do a quick check. The Russell 2000, last I looked, was up. Okay, the Russell 2000 is now up for 13 days in a row, going on 14 days in a row without a single down day. Now, why might that surprise some people? Well, because that is a reaction, uh, it's a positive reaction to Donald Trump getting into the White House. Investors believe that he is going to be able to help the U.S. economy, which in turn will help companies, which in turn will help investors, which in turn will help the consumers even. But what I'm looking at is, and listen, I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, looking at this in a pessimistic sort of way, as great as Donald Trump might be to some people, I'm telling you, he is not going to be able to fix the amount of debt the U.S. and other countries have taken on. He is not going to be able to fix that. I don't care if he's in office for 30 years. He's not going to be able to fix the damage that's already been done. So what I mean by that is you have to identify the facts and put that into the market when you're looking at the market and the segment trends. I am looking for a major correction. I'm talking major, major correction that eventually will happen. There's a bubble out there. So we have to look at that. We also have to identify the stocks within the trends. You know, right now, the oil markets have been fluctuating. The gold markets and, and, and the silver markets, precious metals, have been going down recently. That doesn't mean they're going to stay down, but you have to look at those. You have to, when, when you finally do get a stock that you want to, uh, to trade, you have to then say, okay, well, what, what am I going to do? Where, where am I going to buy it? You know, if I, if I buy the stock and, and I like it, where, where, where's my entry price going to be? You know, you have to look at those things before you actually pull the trigger. And then, again, before you even pull the trigger, you have to identify the place you're going to get out. Remember, we said that. That is predetermined where the exit point is. And we're also going to use the math formula to, uh, to determine how many shares we get to buy. Uh, you, might, um, you might notice my check mark is to the left. That's, that's a lefty check mark. For those who are righty, they do it the other way, but that's a lefty check mark. Okay. Uh, and point number six, uh, execute your opening trade and immediately put in your stop order. Now, I know the Canadian uh, markets... Uh, are, are a little bit different with regard to stops, stop losses and trailing stops and such. Uh, you could also substitute, and I'll go into this in more detail, you can absolutely substitute a, uh, a price alert for a stop as long as you're going to stick to the discipline and, and, and make the trade when the time comes. Okay, so let me go on to the next slide here. Why isn't my slide advancing? Oh, here we go. All right. Oh, that's not... Huh. I uh, don't know what's happening there, Rose. My my thing is not going. Let's see if this goes. Huh. Rose, my, uh, my screen is locked here. I don't know what happened. Let's see. You have to change the cursor. Oh, I see. There it is. Pointer. Thank you. Ah, there it is. 
I now have to get rid of those those lines. <laughs> okay, <laughs> erase all drawings. There we go. Okay, let's get into the meat of it. This is a candle chart. You see green and red candles, and the overall trend is going to be going up. Okay, so this trend is in an up. Oh, we went too far. The the trend is going up. It's in, in an upward direction, and the what I do. Oh boy, here we go. A little fumbling of the. I, I want to draw the line on there. I have to make sure I do that. Hold on. There's the pen. Okay, so AJ. in order to draw a trend line, I got it. There we go. In order to draw a trend line, what you have to do is you have to take and you draw a line connecting as many of those lows as you possibly can in the straightest line you possibly can. And you can see that there's higher right, lows. I'm, I'm going to cut you off. The screen's not moving. We're stuck on the basic steps of risk management. Oh, what happened there? Uh, and are you using two monitors? No, using okay. one. Let me get, erase that and use this pointer. Yeah, nothing's uh, moving for us. Let's see. No, I don't want to make Albert the presenter. Let's see. I'll start over again. Is it moving now? No, not yet. I have your PowerPoint ready if you want to take over my computer. Uh, yeah, why don't we try to do that? Let's see okay. if that works. I don't know what happened. That's uh, interesting. Okay, now how I don't see where I would draw the... I could I could move uh, the it's not allowing me to lose, move the next slide there. Let's see. Uh, you know what? Flip flip back to me. Let's let's try one one more time. Let's see if I could um, if I can do this. Are you seeing my screen now? Yes, it's on identify support. Okay, there it is. Got it. Okay, we got it. Okay, so when you're when you're looking at a stock, and now I'm the red arrow that's right there is um, identifying a pivot point. Now, if you could for a moment uh, imagine that past uh, on the right hand side of the arrow, let's imagine the price does not exist yet. Okay, so the red line represents a former resistance line that was broken and again if you if you follow the market guys five points for success is a thing called roll reversal it's when and Rose can you see my cursor circling can you see can you see the cursor yes right I can see it Okay, good. Yes. I, I won't use that. Okay. So right here is an area of resistance that was broken right here. And many times once the resistance is broken, it turns into support. So you're going to wait for this V formation to form. And that is what you have to wait for. Wait for the pivot point, and then once the pivot point forms, you could draw your support level. Now, again, that line represents support, but your stop range is somewhere below support. So think of support as the floor. You do not want that stock to be dropping below the floor. Because uh, if it does, that means it's failing and it's going to most likely go lower. All right, so that, that's where the stop is going to be. Now, the math formula, and like I said, it's very, very simple math. The first step is to calculate your risk amount. And I'm using the $100,000 example uh, so make the math easier for everyone. You would have to extrapolate and, and apply this to your own account, whatever that number may be. Now, if I take 1% of 100000 that leaves me with a $1,000 risk amount. That amount has nothing to do with the price of the stock. It has everything to do with your the value of your account. We And, and 
we wouldn't have even looked at a stock yet. This risk amount is going to be simply 1% of the value of your account at all times. So we take that risk amount and we put that to the side. Step number two, and this is the recipe card, step number two is to figure out what the risk per share is. Now, the risk per share is simply your entry price or your buy price minus your stop price or the place you would get out. All right, so if I buy the stock at 45 and I'm going to get out at 43 if it moves against me, then the risk per share is $2. So you have step one, the risk amount. You have step two, the risk per share, and now we put this all together. When your stop price is down below, let's say, $2, you're, you're going to buy it at 45 and sell it at 43 So that's the difference between these two levels is my risk per share. That's how we come up with that. That's the visual aid that, I, that I've given to you on the slide. Okay. Now the final step is to take the risk amount and divide that by the risk per share. That's it. That's all this is. And that tells us that you will be able to buy 500 shares of that stock. No more, no less, 500 shares. Because let's, let me go back to that, to that slide. If I buy the stock at 45 and, and I get stopped out here, the most I'm going to lose is 1% of the value of my account, or $1,000. That's it. Now remember this because when we go to your slides, when we go to your stocks rather, I, we're going to be calculating what the risk per share is going to be. You'll have to determine what your risk amount is uh, based on your own account. But I'll, I'll probably use a $1,000, uh, excuse me, a $100,000 account as the model account for everyone to make it easy. Okay? So that, that's how we calculate that. So step one, step two, step three, step three being let's figure out how many shares we get to buy. Now let's take, if we have any questions, type them in right now. Let me just pull up my Q&A box. Do we have any questions? No questions, no questions, no questions. Okay. And let's go right down. Okay. Now. This, uh, this bull and the bear, we know what that means. Bull fights with its horns going up. The bear fights with its claws going down. This can also be applied in a bear market. The only thing is you're doing everything in reverse. And I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this because not many people short the market. So let, me, let me just see, by show of hands, how many uh, people actually have shorted the market on the way down? Nancy, and who else? Anybody else? Well, okay, no one else. All right, so I don't have to spend that much time. But for Nancy's sake, I will tell you that if you are shorting the market, you're selling the stock first, so your buy stop is going to be above resistance. So in other words, if I sell the stock at 45, but my buy stop is 47, I still have a risk per share of $2, and I use that in my calculation to figure out how many shares I get, I get to buy. Remember in the very beginning I said technical analysis is going to be one of the key tools? I, I'm, I'm telling you something. Last week was the first week in 33 weeks that I was not 100% accurate in my forecast. And I have to say that a lot of that was driven by the election. But 33, we, I had 100% on four major indices analyzing the markets week, week after week after week for 33 weeks. I pegged each one of the forecasts 100% accurate on all markets for 33 weeks. Last week, I had a few wrong. I had the volumes correct, but that was just the way it went. Now, if I was shorting the market and I, the market moved against me, that would have been one time in 33 weeks that I would have lost 1%. Okay? So I'm, I'm trading the gold markets now, so it's, it's kind of apart from the Russell 2000, but I'll get into that in a little bit. Now, um, this whole idea of protecting is all about risk management. This is, 
and I told Rose this, I wish there were 5,000 people on this presentation. And for all I know, 5,000 people might actually get to see the recording. I don't know who out there in the future is watching us right now, but I can only hope that thousands of people get this because this is the key to your success. If you ask any professional trader what's their number one reason why they make money, is they'll call it, they don't call it risk management, they call it the drawdown. They have a very small drawdown. They will not let their account be drawn down by more than, in some cases, a half of 1%. And let me tell you, professional traders are trading many, many more stocks than you would ever imagine, and probably more stocks than you'll ever trade, and they use risk management as the number one rule. And they have to, because if they don't, they get fired, believe it or not. Now, uh, on the Market Guys website, the, you see my cursor here. Uh, if you click, if you go to the Market Guys website and click on the video tab, there's a whole library of videos, and we call these market shots. They're very, very small or short videos, anywhere between five and seven minutes long. I think the 1% rule is six minutes or seven minutes long. If you want to review, go to the Market Guys website, go through the library, and you can watch it over and over and over again. And that way, when it comes time for you to place your order, uh, then you could go back and use the, uh, use the calculations that I've used. Now, Charles says, should Canadians use the stop calculation to set an alert, or should alert be above stop? Okay. Canadians will use the same exact calculation. The only difference on a lot of the Canadian stocks is going to be in the way you actually execute the sell order. So, for instance, you may not be able to put in a, stop, a sell stop on a stock that you just bought at 45. Okay? But you could put an alert to, to uh, alert you when the price is trading 43. And in the Scotia alerts, you could actually put notes. So, if you get an alert, and the note says sell out of position, what are you going to do? You're going to go sell your position. Okay? Now, June says, how many stocks would you typically have in your portfolio? Now, June, that's a really good question because in a trading account, my, my personal clients, the ones who I mentor, I do not recommend they have more than 15 stocks in their portfolio because what happens if you're, and, and think about this, Let's imagine um, you've hired me to coach you, okay, and you have 15 stocks, and we put a 1% rule on each one of the 15 stocks. Let's say, and that's highly unlikely that this is going to happen, but let's say you lose money on all 15 of your stocks. Every one of them got stopped out. June, this question is directly to you. How much of a percentage loss did you take to your account? if you lost on all 15 stocks using the 1% rule. There's a little bit of a delay there. Okay. I think, I don't know if it's coming through. Well, you, you would have lost 15%, and that would have been wrong 100. You got it. You, 15%. You would have been wrong 100%. You would have only lost 15%. Well, you could still recover 15%, and that's an extreme example. Chances are you're not going to lose 15 stocks in a row. If you, if you do that, you shouldn't be trading. I'm just using that as an extreme example, okay? Um, okay, so uh, Heather says she hasn't shorted the market, but she, she would want to know. Uh, there, uh, Heather, there is a recording uh, on the Scotia Library uh, bear market strategies, bear mar B -E -A -R, market strategies. Go in there; it's recorded, and that'll show you how to short sell. We go into that in detail, and there's a couple of other things you can do to short the market uh, by trading some of the funds that are out there. Okay, let me look at my clock here. Hold on. We saw oh, good. We still have about 16 minutes left to go. Uh, by the way, um, I put out a trade alert to my uh, subscribers. Uh, at 11 o'clock this morning, and as an educational tool, please do not trade against this. Remember, this is not advice. If you want that as an example, and I'm going to be putting out an option alert on uh, on Friday morning because uh, the markets, the U.S. markets are open till one o'clock. 
if you want a sample of that so you can see how I show everyone how to use a one percent rule just email me uh, a, a, don't not a whole email just say please send me a sample of the Oracle something like that real short uh, I'm not going to charge you what that's going to do in in the document I have a risk management note box and it's at the bottom of the last page on each alert and it outlines the one percent rule and how I would apply it to that particular trade. So again, don't trade against it, but use it as an example uh, to manage the risk. So if you want that, uh, or, or if you can type in your email. Okay, I can see that. If you want to type in your email, you can do that too. Rose has been pretty good with sending me the name, so thank you, Charles. I see your email there. Okay, now uh, let's go to the live charts. Rose, can you take control back and then uh, what I'll do is I'll monitor the uh, I'll monitor the uh, the Q and A box, and we'll see if we can get anyone to volunteer some stock symbols. Caroline says PPY on the Toronto Exchange. Now, Caroline, what what I'm going to do is uh, is I'm going to go through all of the steps that we went over. And using this as an example now, PPY. Uh, this is uh, we're gonna put PPY in there, and then if anyone else has any other symbols, we can we can go over that. Well, we have enough time to go over. I think we can get at least a couple couple done here. Uh, is this just, PPY? I just have, no, I just have Roberts. It, it was up on the list first. Oh, NSU. okay. So, all right, then we'll go to Caroline next. Okay, so um, Robert had that on there. I didn't see it. Okay, I must have missed that. Good. I'm glad you caught that. Okay, so Robert, here is a, a good example of a stock that is breaking out over resistance. Now, the one that I'm going to use, Rose, maybe you could draw a horizontal line right at four twenty, four dollars and twenty cents. Off to the right, there's an area of um, just draw a horizontal line. There's an area. Uh, in in November, right there, just put it right at 420, exactly at 420. There we go. Outlines. There we go. All right. Now, if you look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven days ago, that stock sold off from the 420 level. You see how it came down? That was resistance. That was resistance. Now. Uh, the stock has broken out of over resistance, so now that four dollars and twenty cents is going to act as support. Now, normally, what I do is I wait for the stock to come back down to that line and bounce before I buy it. Uh, this is interesting because the stock is showing a green candle, but the volume is much lower than it was yesterday. So that's not telling me a strong buyers are coming in. So let's, but let's assume that you buy the stock today and it's trading 440. So I want to put my stop somewhere below that support level. So let's put it down. Let's go, let's go down to 390. I'm going to put a stop at 390. That's 50 cents below the support level. So I'm going to put a stop down there. So here's the here's the notes and be ready to answer because I'm going to ask you a question. Let's see who comes up with it first. If I have a hundred thousand dollar account, what is my risk amount? Who wants to be the first one to tie that in and answer it? What is my risk amount? Remember, the risk amount is simply a calculation of one percent of my total account. All right, so the risk amount, thank you, Prem, thank you, Michael, is $1,000. Now, what do I do with that $1,000? I, I hold it. That's my risk amount. Now, if my risk per share is the difference between my purchase price and my stock price, we know that my risk per share is $0.50. Cents. So what do I do with that number? I divide my risk amount by my risk per share, 50 cents, how many shares do I get to buy? I get to buy 2,000 shares. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, Prem. Thank you. Yeah, I get to buy 2,000 shares. Now, we all know that with $100,000, you can buy more than 2,000 shares of this stock. 
but but you don't want to do that because now you're trading outside of your risk parameters. See, if you buy 2,000 shares, you still have plenty of money left over to go buy a few more stocks. And that's the whole name of the game is to preserve your capital, to keep it working in the market, to spread the risk. All right, now repetition will be our best teacher. So let's go to PPY on the Toronto. And let's go with that. And Carolyn, do you have a position in this already? If you have one, please let me know. I'd be curious to, to see where, where you are. All right, here's another one. Stock is, uh, stock is moving higher. It's going into a new high. It's broken out over the $10 level. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change things up on you. I'm going to identify the support level at $7. $7. So, Rose, why don't we go and put that line at 7 I'm sorry. Yeah, let's go. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, right there. Right there. That's good. Seven dollars. Actually, raise it to seven and a half because there's a support level right around September first. Seven and a half. Okay. So the support is at seven and a half. I'm going to place my stop at seven. Let's assume that we buy the stock at three. My risk amount is still the same. One thousand dollars. My risk per share now is a little bit different. Now, I'm, don't before anyone tries to throw an answer in there, wait, wait until I ask a question. If I have a risk amount of 1,000 and my risk per share is three, I could buy roughly 333 shares of the stock. But notice what's happening here. If I buy the stock at 10 and I allow it to move $3 against me, that's a 30% drop in the share price, isn't it? That's, that's a pretty severe drop, wouldn't you say? See, that's the beauty of, of using the 1% rule. I could let a stock drop 30% against me, but I'm only still going to lose 1% of my account value in doing so. See, I, I love trading highly volatile stocks. Because I could just set my stop way below wherever it's trading and still only risk 1% of my total account. Isn't that beautiful? That's, that's how good this is. Okay, now Charles is asking BNS. All right, now, now Rose cannot answer this question because she works for Bank of Nova Scotia, but I can. All right, I'm going to identify support right around 69 there we go. $69 is where I'm going to put my stop, right? right? Right there. All right. So I have to put my stop below support. So I'm going to put my stop at 68. So that gives me a two, a four and a half dollar risk per share, roughly four and a half dollars. Okay. So if I have my risk amount at a thousand dollars and I'm risking four and a half dollars how many shares do I get to buy who wants to be the first one again simple math simple simple math who's first alright the answer is 222 <laughs> thank you Prem what I would suggest you do though when it comes up with a with an oddball lot they call that an odd lot um, I would round down or round up to the next hole uh, in hundreds of shares so I would buy 200 shares of the stock and and then move on from there okay and even even 200 shares I'm still only spending less than fifteen thousand dollars out of my hundred thousand dollar account you see so that that's how this works who wants I think we have room for two more stocks who wants to type in Rose I'll let you pick those see Michael has one who else uh, Rose, you can pick it. All right, BNS, and then who else is the next one? Let's see who Rose is picking. A, looks like APH, is it? APH. All right. Wow, look at this, isn't it? Hey, folks, look at that. I, I would say that's an upward trend, wouldn't you? This, I could actually use this in my PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to use a stop right below 
the lows from the first week of November. So rows, whatever that is, a, a, a support level rather. Let's say 60, let's say 60, uh, 64, 65 is my support level. So I'm, I'm going to, let's say I buy this stock at $68, $68. I'm going to set my stop at 64. So I'm going to use a risk per share of $4, divide that into my risk amount of 1,000, I get to buy 250 shares. You could round up to 300, round down to 200. Your choice, and that's that's how you would do it. That's a nice looking stock, right there. But uh, I would uh, I would caution who who put this one in. Michael, uh, look at the volume on this one, Michael. You, this is a this is the very reason why you should have a stop in place, because when you see the dramatic drop in volume the past three days have been I mean, an evaporation of volume. What that tells us is that the buyers are starting to lose some of their momentum. And when you see the buyers starting to lose some of the momentum, the sellers start to move in. So this is definitely a stock you want to protect and, and preserve. Uh, especially if, if you bought into this one, you're probably, you're probably making money on it. All right, Rose, I think that's all the time that I have. One last thing. Um, it's uh, Thanksgiving Day in the U.S. Uh, tomorrow. You've all had your Thanksgiving already, so belated happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Uh, I'm, I'm very thankful. It's, it's, it's my favorite holiday of the year, and I'm, I'm very grateful as well. You know, I'm thankful and grateful that I have the ability to teach all of you uh, one of my passions, and that's how to make money. The only thing I ask and some of you have heard this already, I'll say it again. The only thing I ask is that when you make a lot of money and you've taken care of your needs and your family, how about you turn out and do something really great with the money? Do something good. There's always someone or something that you can contribute to that will pass on a legacy, and I encourage you to do that. So, Rose, thank you so much. I appreciate your help on driving the machine, the, uh, trade, the flight desk, and we'll go from there. So back to you. Thanks, AJ. So you can access our webinar recordings on our website from next week on. And also, don't forget to fill out that short survey that does pop up after you exit today's session. Um, this really allows us to customize our um, education and uh, to better meet your needs. And also, next Thursday, December 1st at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, we have our How to Get Started with the Scotia iTrade webinar. And AJ joins us again on Thursday, December 8th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time to present Hammer Patterns. And also feel free to sign up for our other webinars on our seminar and webinar calendar under the Learn and Do More section and also past webinar recordings can be located on the Webinars on Demand page. And with that, I want to thank AJ for sharing his insights and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, have a happy Thanksgiving, AJ, there in the States. And thanks, everyone, and have a great day. And also the handout is already available in the handouts panel. Take care.